want to bring in Dr. Carolyn Mercer, the chief technologist for NASA's Science Mission Directorate, joining us now live. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Hey, thank you for having me. It is a great day for science and a great day for those of us who live in the path of totality. I was going to say, of all the people I talked to, you're probably going to be a NASA one of the most excited. So first off, can you break down for me what an eclipse really is? Oh, sure. So an eclipse is when the Earth and the Moon and the Sun all line up exactly so that the Moon blocks the light from the Sun. Um, it just so happens that the Moon is exactly the right size so that when it is positioned correctly, we can get that totality of blockage. Um, the exciting thing, of course, is that once the moon has blocked the sun, we're going to be able to see the outer atmosphere of the sun, which we call the corona, and it is a wonderful thing to see. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, beautiful images right here on your screen that we're taking a look at at this hour here. Why is this so exciting for so many people who are out there, even if you're along the path of totality or not? So it's really the best along the path of totality because that's the only place where you can see that corona, the outer um, atmosphere of the sun. And, you know, at NASA we take safety seriously, so everyone should wear their total solar eclipse glasses as they're watching the moon cross the sun, which is what you're starting to see in the images that you're showing. But once the moon completely blocks the sun, then you have to take the glasses off to see the corona. The corona is where the energetic particles that traverse all through space are born. And we are really interested in studying that corona because it influences what we call space weather. Just like we have weather here on Earth, we have weather on the sun. And it can influence our upper atmosphere and it can influence our spacecraft and our electronics. So this is a really special time to get to learn more about that corona. What does NASA learn from all of this? As you mentioned, it's a time to learn about the corona and get some more information, but how does it work to, I guess, help with future missions and uh, things of that nature? Right, so we send up what's called sounding rockets to go up into the Earth's upper atmosphere. So we can study what's going on in the atmosphere before, during, and after the total solar eclipse. And the way that our atmosphere responds to those changes gives us a really dynamic insight into how our atmosphere works. That's really important to us as we understand the Earth as a system and understand how it's changing and make sure that we have really good, accurate models to predict both weather and climate. We also really care about making sure that our astronauts are safe. And so periods of maximum solar activity, we need to protect them when they're on the International Space Station. What do you say to people out there who they hear that this is happening, they've been watching the images and say, this isn't that exciting, it's not a big deal. What do you say to them? So, you know, in 2017, I kind of thought the same thing, but we drove down to Kentucky to see it. And the difference between totality and partial eclipse is just the difference between being truly awed by something and having something that's kind of fun to do. It's a full body sensation. You'll feel the changes, you'll hear the changes, you'll see the changes. And I don't know about you, but I don't get enough awe in my life. So it's really a spectacular event. And I clearly have kind of a crooked face right here, <laughs> but it's really important to note that you have to wear these glasses. So why is it so important to make sure that you are wearing the glasses? Right, you will damage your eyes if you look at the sun. Everybody learned that in kindergarten, right? So we don't want to look at the sun. Even though the moon may be blocking most of it, it's still too bright to look with your eyes. You have to wear the glasses until the moon entirely covers the sun. And then once the, the moon starts to pass through on the other side, you have to put those glasses back on. But during totality, you have to take the glasses off in order to see the corona. All right, Dr. Carolyn Mercer, Chief Technologist for NASA's Science Mission Directorate. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and kind of break down all of these details here. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? Oh, well, just wishing for clear skies all along the path. It's looking pretty good so far here in Cleveland, so fingers crossed it's going to stay clear. 
That's what we're all hoping for. Thank you again for being here. Thank you.